Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Hirabil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hayyakum Allah jami'an. Continuing on in our study of Shara Sunnah lil Imam al-Muzni wa rahmatullahi alayhi wa rahmatin wasi'ah. We reach the section of the treaties after his discussion of the Sahabat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'anu majma'een where it was a continuation of the rights of the leader, of the Muslim ruler of the rulers from amongst the Muslims whether they be righteous or whether they be wicked and so this is a very important point in Aqidah and in Minhaj methodology, creed and methodology. And this is why it's in the creed books. Uh, and you find that many of the classical texts that they dealt with this mas'ala, they dealt with this same issue of discussing about the issue of praying behind a sinful imam or a mubtadia from amongst the aimma or or making jihad behind them or hajj and these are because these are collective islamic duties the jumwa hajj uh and jihad and these are islamic duties that can become that are obligatory upon the Muslims in general uh, and of course jihad has its halat, his different uh, conditions and must be in relation to the Muslim authority especially in uh, offensive jihad and likewise the prayer requires, of course, an imam. And so, Imam al-Muzni, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, is discussing these important issues uh, in this section of his treaties. So the imam begins, he says, وَلَا يُطْرُكْ حُضُورْ صَلَاتِ الْجُمْعَةِ وَصَلَاتِهَا مَا الْبِرِّ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ وَفَاجِرِهَا لَازِمْ مَا كَانَ مِنَ الْبِدْعَةِ بَرِيًّا فَإِنَّ نَبْتَدَعَ ضَلَالًا فَلَا صَلَاةَ خَلْفُهُ وَالْجِهَادِ مَعَ كُلِّ إِمَامٍ عَدْلٍ أَوْ جَائِرٍ وَالْحَجِّ So he mentions, he mentions about prayer behind the leaders and jihad and hajj along with them. He said, and the Jumwa prayer must uh, must not be abandoned and praying behind the righteous and sinful person of this ummah is binding. As long as he is free from innovation. So if he innovates misguidance, then there is no prayer behind him. And jihad and the hajj must be performed along with every leader, regardless of whether he is just or oppressive. So there are many issues that are separate masail here that Imam al muzni is touching on. Because as he mentioned, he said, and the Juma must not be abandoned in praying behind the Imam, behind, behind the righteous and sinful person of this Ummah is an obligation. Okay? And then he makes a exception. He says, as long as he is free from innovation, meaning free from bid'ah. So then that leads us to believe that salat behind a mubtadiyah is not sahih. So this is one of the issues that we have to touch on. Because then Imam Muzani says, so if he innovates misguidance, then there's no prayer behind him. So this is not uh, correct or what we can say, this is not uh, this issue is not uh, in totality, this mas'ala. Meaning, 
that although Imam Mazani he mentioned that the prayer behind a mubtadi'ah uh, that makes bid'ah in his salat or that he uh, is a mubtadi'ah in general that this is uh, not uh, a correct prayer it's not correct to pray behind him this is not uh, in totality this issue this, this is not completely correct that there are details to this uh, issue. And Imam Ahmed al Najmi, he mentions in his explanation of this text, he says, And I say, Havihi kalima, fa in abtada'a dalalan, fala salat khalfuhu, ma'naha kafa bi dawati il al qu bi khalf al Quran dalalan, wakad wakaat. في أحد الأئمة أحمد ابن حنبل وعلي بن مديني ويحيى بن معين وأبو عبير قاسم بن سلام والبخاري وإن كان صغيرا هناك وغيرهم من أهل العلم ومع ذلك لم ينهوا عن صلاة خلف من داعوا إلى بدع قول بخلق القرآن so this is very important. Imam uh, Ahmed al-Najmi, he mentions, he says, and the statement of Imam Muzni, when he mentioned about uh, the one who innovates in this religion, misguidance, that there is no prayer, that you cannot pray behind him. Uh, Imam Ahmed, I mean, Imam Ahmed al-Najmi, he mentions the meaning of this, is that this sin uh, is wicked in and of itself. It's enough, meaning this bid'ah, and he gives the bid'ah, the example of the bid'ah of the statement of the Jehemiah who said that the Quran was created. He said that this statement in and of itself is wicked enough. It's a wicked enough uh, statement. And that uh this bid'ah took place during the era of Imam Ahmed and Imam Ali ibn Madini wa Imam Yahya ibn Ma'in and the Imam Abu Ubaid Qasim bin Salam and Imam al-Bukhari that this bid'ah, this bid'ah which is bid'ah mukaffara took place during their time and he said and, uh, and other than them from the imams. And he says, and with regards to this, or even with this bid'ah, this severe bid'ah, that this these imams were calling to, not meaning these imams of the sunnah, but they still, all of these imams, it took place during their time, and none of them prevented salat behind the imam that called to this bid'ah, that called to the bid'ah of declaring that the Qur'an was created. And then he says, لَمْ يَنْهَ أَسَّلَفْ عَنْ ذَلِكْ فِي ذَكَانَ إِمَامٍ فَصَلَاةْ وَرَاهُ أَمْرٌ مَطْلُوبٌ So he said, and the salaf, they didn't, they also did not, uh, did not, declare that this prayer was batil or prohibit the people from praying this prayer uh, especially with regards to the imam meaning that if this was the imam of the muslims the leader of the muslims or the imam in a particular area then prayer behind him was something that was uh, necessary, you know, that this was matlub, this was recommended. So here we need to now break down this issue a little bit, so that way we have a, a proper understanding. So in this scenario here, and we'll, we'll talk about this shortly in uh, from another uh, jihad as well, in this uh, particular scenario, uh, and, and, and in the scenario of those various imams, they were dealing with 
imams, you know, leaders that declared that the Quran was created, that that was a part of their da'wah. We refer to this, as I believe we discussed prior to this, about bid'ah being two classifications. Bid'ah, mukaffara, wa bid'ah, ghayra mukaffara. Bid'ah mukaffara means bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Bid'ah ghayra mukaffara is bid'ah less than that, meaning that a person who innovates, does this type of innovation, is not a disbeliever. They are uh, a sinner, they've done a major sin, because bid'ah is a major sin. But they are still in the fold of Islam. But if they do the bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam, then this is called bid'ah mukaffara. This sin of declaring that the Qur'an is created, this bid'ah, this is bid'ah mukaffara. Because the Salaf were united in takfir of the Jahmiyyah for this issue. And those who declared that the Qur'an was created. The Salaf made takfir of them. And they even declared that those people from the Imams who didn't take a position, who didn't say that this uh, is a bid'ah and make tibdi of those who made this, they, they, they were the waqifun, you know, they didn't take a position, neither here nor there, that they even declared that they were mubtidia and that their bid'ah was severe because they didn't take a clear position in this mas'ala because it was so serious with the salaf. Now, what we have to look out here is as we mentioned, this is bid'ah abu kafara. And in the time of Imam Ahmed and a lot of the other a'imma, it wasn't like in this day and age where there are kathra to masajid. In those days, you might have a, a, a masjid and maybe the leader was the one praying there or there wasn't uh, many masajid so there would be an imam and it would be absolutely necessary to pray behind him to pray the Jumu'ah prayer. If you didn't, you wouldn't have a Jumu'ah prayer because it was too far to go to another locality or another country perhaps uh, or another region uh, to uh, pray the Jumu'ah prayer. So you would be end up having to pray behind this imam and if you were not praying behind this imam there would be fitna. So under this circumstances in order to keep the uh, community, community, the ummah unified and for there not to be fitna, they would pray behind these imams and they would not call the people to not pray behind them. But this is in the special mas'ala uh, with regards to this being the bid'ah mukaffara of the imam. And so in this situation, the prayer, of course, if, if it's bid'ah mukaffara, that this imam is, if they make takfir of him, okay, so this is another issue. This is the difference between takfir al-ma'ayyin wa takfir al-mutlaq. Uh, the takfir al-ma'ayyin means takfir of a specific individual. Takfir al-mutlaq means takfir of a wasf, uh, kufriya. The takfir in general of uh, a person who does this. So here... The Salaf used to say, whoever says the Qur'an is created, فُهُوَ جَهْمِي or فُهُوَ kafir, That he is a Jahmi from the Jahmiyyah and that he's a disbeliever. This is what the Salaf said. We call this, what do we call this? We call this takfir mutlaq, the general takfir. Uh, and as far as takfir al ma'ayyin, and we talked about this prior, that would be to talk, uh, make takfir of the specific individual. So we don't have that Imam Ahmed made takfir of this uh, of the Imam who was saying that the Quran was created. So he prayed behind him, but he would. Uh, it was reported that he would yu'id uh, salat, that he would at his home he would repeat the prayer. 
Because if you believe that the Imam, and it's clear, not just on your dhan, that it's clear that the Imam is a disbeliever, that he, he prays to the dead or whatever, he has some bid'a kufriya, bid'a mukaffara, that's clear and open, and the hujjah, the proof has been established upon him. And for some reason, maybe you're the only one in this village. For example, it's the only masjid. And if you don't pray there, there's going to be fitna. Maybe perhaps it will break the jama'ah. Maybe there will be fighting. It will lead to a, a greater harm. Then praying behind him and then repeating the prayer under those types of circumstances would be uh, jaiz to the a'emma. And this is what the scenario uh, uh, Imam Ahmed Najmi is talking about here. And in regards to that, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Ida dhahara min al musalli ay imam al salat bida o fujur wa amkan salat khalf min yu'lam annuhu mubtadia o fasik ma imkan al salat khalf gayrahu fa akthara ahl al ilm yusahihuna salat al ma'mum wa hadha madhab al shafi'i. وأبي حنيفة وهو أحد قولين في إمام مالك وأحمد. so uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he said if it becomes apparent to those who are praying behind uh, who are praying behind an Imam that has a bid'a, okay, or he is a wicked sinner, he's known for alcoholism, smoking. Uh, marijuana, whatever. He, he is a wicked sinner. He's doing major sins. And a person has the ability to pray and they know that this person is a wicked sinner and a mubtediya and they can pray behind other than him that most of the imams they said that this prayer and this is from the different medhebs they said that you can still pray behind this mubtediya, okay? Even if you know that he's a wicked sinner and he's a mubtediya, and you have an option. And you have an option. So this is the, the point that uh, Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah is me mentioning here, that here we're talking about a scenario where you have a mubtediya that is known, or you have an imam that's a wicked sinner. You know this man, imam has many... Uh, girlfriends and you know he's a wicked sinner he's known for sin and you and you have the ability to pray in another masjid which is a masjid of, of Ahlul Sunnah or there's an imam who is at least uh, he doesn't have bid'ah and he doesn't have open sin you have that ability to pray behind him your prayer is still sound even behind this wicked sinner this is the st this is the viewpoint of most of the Imams, most of Ahl al-Ilm. And he mentioned uh, from those uh, uh, Imams, Imam Shafi'i and Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, and uh, that this is one of the views of Imam Malik, meaning Imam Malik had uh, more than one view about this, and Imam Ahmed. So we understand from this that the prayer behind a Mubtadiya and so we don't confuse the issue because it is uh, a bit deep, especially when we get deep into this issue. We're going to talk to make it very clear. And before we do, just to say that it is permissible, of course, to pray behind a mubtediya. It is permissible to pray behind a mubtediya as long as he does not have bid'a mukaffara. That's the shahid. That's the main point of what we're talking about. And again, we're going to continue. And we're going to discuss some other masail or uh, other issues related to this. So regarding this issue, there are several important uh, issues that need to be observed. So in general, Salat Khalf al the prayer behind an innovator. أَمَّا مَنْ كَانَ مُبْتَدِعًا فَإِنَّهُ أَخْتَلَفُ الْعُلَمَا فِي صَلَاةِ خَلْفِهِ وَفَارَقُوا بَيْنَ مَنْ بِدْعَتِهِ مُكَفْرَةً وَبِدْعَةً مُفَاسَقَةً So, 
As far as praying behind a, an innovator, someone who innovates in the religion of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the scholars, they differ regarding uh, the details of this issue, as we mentioned, uh, and even some regarding the hukum, because as we mentioned, that majority of the ulama, majority of Ahl al -ilm, uh, of course, say that it is permissible, but we have to look at some uh, some more additional details in order to hopefully make it uh, very clear for us. So he said that the, the scholars, that they differ regarding prayer behind him, and of course this, regard, this is regarding the issue that we mentioned, whether his bid'ah takes him out of the fold of Islam, or whether it is bid'ah that he remains in the fold of Islam. Bid'ah mukaffara wa bid'ah ghayra mukaffara o bid'ah mufassaka. They also call it bid'ah mufassaka. You know, uh, uh, wicked innovation. Meaning that it, it, it's a, a sinful innovation, but it does not take you out of the fold of Islam. He says, فَإِمَّا مِنْ بِدْعَتِهِ مُكَفَّرَ فَلَا يُسَلِي خَلْفُهُ وَلَوْ سَلَّ خَلْفُهُ لِأَجْلِ عَدَمَ الْفِتْنَةِ يُعِيدَ الصَّلَاةِ So this is very important because this is what we're, is in the context of what Imam Ahmed and some of the great Imams, as we mentioned, Imam Bukhari and others, at, in relation to what they face, you know, because they were praying behind the Imams of the, the country. You know, the Imams, you know, or maybe a Khalifa. So they were praying behind big imams. So he said, and as for the bid'ah mukaffara, okay, this is the bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Do not pray behind this person, okay? We, we, we said this. He said, but if you pray, so this is the exception, if you pray behind him in order to make make sure they're in order to uh, avoid fitna then you repeat the prayer so you'd repeat the prayer at home or you'd pray before you'd either pray pray after or pray before and then that would pray you would pray nawafil you would just consider it you would make your nia your intention to pray by yourself even though you're following the actions of the imam Okay, but you would repeat that prayer because prayer behind someone with bid'ah mukaffara, if you know, is is not uh, uh, acceptable prayer. You cannot pray behind a disbeliever. That's that's the the shahid there. So, what does it mean when we're talking about this fitna? This fitna, because the the asl of this mas'ala is that you don't pray behind someone who who disbelieves. Okay, so that means the one who has bid'ah mukaffara, they believe in praying to the saints. They uh, sacrifice animals to the saints and they give them food on their graves or they just say in the name of so-and-so or they uh, make dua to the, to the dead and seek shifa'ah, uh, intercession from them. All of this is bid'ah mukaffara. So yes, it's a wicked sin, it's a major sin, and it's shirk, and it is also a bid'ah in the religion of Islam. This is why they refer to it as bid'ah mukaffara. This is the bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. So, the general hukum is you do not pray, you cannot pray behind them. You cannot. So those extreme people who have this kind of bid'ah, it's not permissible to pray behind them. If you are in a particular situation, most of us are not in this kind of scenario. If we're in the West or uh, in many countries, you have options. You have masajid maybe of Ahl Sunnah or at least that do not have that level of deviance where they're praying to the graves or seeking intercession or supplicating to the dead or, or sacrificing to them. You usually have options. Now, if you're in a place though, and for example, you're in a village. Maybe you're in a village in Tanzania. You're in a village in uh, Morocco, wherever. And it's, for example, the only masjid that's around. And everyone knows, you know, that you're there. And if you do not pray in that masjid, it will be a great fitna. 
not just like, oh, people will be a little upset with you, but if you do not pray behind that, it could go to fighting. You know, maybe your father-in-law is Sufi or something like this, an extreme Sufi, you know, and they, they, they have some saint worship or grave worship, and you are in this village visiting your in-laws. So your in-laws, they think of you as Muslim, of course, and they expect you to go to Juma and pray. And if you do not, it could mean that your father-in-law is trying to force you to have a divorce your wife, uh, that you are, uh, you know, that the people in the village may not allow, allow you to leave the village. It, it could actually mean bloodshed. Okay, so we're talking about this kind of fitna. We're talking about fitna that is threatening your life uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and could lead to fighting and, and so on and so forth. In this scenario, and it's Jumwa, that you would pray in the, the Jumwa, and you know they have Bid'a Mukaffara, but you're afraid of this major fitna, okay? This is the only masjid in the village, and you cannot go outside the village, it's too far, okay? Then in this scenario, as Imam Ahmed and some of the great Imams did, is they prayed behind this person who had Bid'a Mukaffara, but they repeated the prayer when they got home. And so this would be that rare scenario. So I hope this is clear. This is not the asl. This is not the, the foundational principle. This is under those circumstances where you are afraid of uh, the fitna that will result. You know, it's as they say, the uh, the lesser of the two evils. The greater evil would be not to pray behind this imam and then the people beating you to death or whatever the case may be. But the second uh, scenario, Amma min bid'atuhu mufassaka wa huwa salat khalf mudahir lil kabira fa farqa fiha ulama bayna imamain. Okay, this is where the issue uh, it has furur. It has some other branches. So let's look at this. So he says, as for the bid'ah, the innovation, which this is bid'ah mufasaka, meaning it doesn't take the person out of the fold of Islam, but they have some bid'ah, you know. Maybe they do group dhikr after salat. They get up and they yell fatiha, and then they all kind of run around and sort of dance around the masjid, shaking each other's hands, saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa salli ala Muhammad like this, and they dance. I, I've been in Masajid, I used to pray in a masjid like this in Hadramot, or in Aden, uh, when I lived in a certain locality, and I was very shocked, because after every salat, they kept getting up, and the Imam, uh, or the Muaddin would yell, Al-Fatiha, like this, and then everyone would stand up, and then they would start doing this dance, almost, like running around the masjid, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa salli ala Muhammad, like this, and they would go and shake each other's hands, and I would just look around and then I would usually leave the masjid or you know, I would be shocked until I asked about this and learned more uh, regarding that masjid. And so, uh, a situation like this, from what we can see, this is bid'ah mufasaka. This is a bid'ah which is, is not disbelief. This is just some bid'ah in ibadah that they're doing, in dhikr and some other practices. So here, this bid'ah, or if it was uh, the imam was known for sin, he was known for smoking weed on the side or having girlfriends or whatever the case may be, he was known to uh, be a sinner. And in this scenario, you pray behind him. You pray behind the imam. It's permissible. If you have an option, it's afdal, min babal afdaliya. If you have an option to pray uh, somewhere else, then this is better. It's better, but it's not necessary. Meaning your salat is, is sound. It's sahih. Now, the scholars even differ, differentiate, differentiate, or they break this mess down into two scenarios. One is if it's the Imam Ratin. Sorry, Imam Ghayra Ratin. فَلَا يُسَلِّ خَلْفُهُ حَجْرًا لَهُ طيب. 
So they break this issue down that if this imam that has this bid'a, mufassaqa, which doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam, if he is praying and he is not the regular imam, he's just one of the, uh, you know, people in the masjid who the imam trusts, or he's just someone else in the masjid who gets up and starts leading the prayer. That some of the scholars, they mention that you can, as a form of hajr, as a form of boycotting, you could choose to not pray behind him. Again, when you're looking at these masail, as we talked about before, mabni al al-masalha wa mafsada. So you have to have fiqh fi deen to know when you should do these and implement these uh, hajr and these, these masail. You don't just make hajr ala itlaq and you don't leave hajr ala itlaq. Meaning you never, there's never hajr. No, no, uh, this is not the min hajj of Ahl sunnah Or that you make hajr all the time. This is also not the min hajj of Ahl sunnah So you have to look at the, mas the, the mas'ala in depth and we're not going to go uh, much deeper into that issue because it's taken, it takes away a little bit from our discussion. But again, this requires fiqh fi deen. So we're just mentioning this from a point of knowledge to understand that the 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 imma they differed with regard to the bid'ah mufassaqa that if this is an imam who's not the regular imam so then there wouldn't generally be fitna and you know he's going to pray then you could not pray behind him as a type of hajr now if you left the masjid most of the people that would be a fitna most of the people would ask you they would question you and it might be you know they would think you're on some weird religion because the people do not understand this issue. So this is why this is an issue of enemy, but as far as its implementation, you need some fiqh to understand when and how to implement it. The other scenario is if it's the Imam Ratan, meaning the main Imam, the, the regular Imam of that masjid who prays the five daily prayers. Then if he has bid'ah, ghayr mukaffara, or bid'ah mufassaqa, as we said, then you pray behind him. Your salat, the salat behind him is jaiz. It is permissible and there is no harm. And this is what the uh, imams of Ahl Sunnah uh, uh, spoke about and said was permissible. So I hope that this issue is clear and that I have not made it confusing and that we have uh, some clear uh, understanding of that aspect of the uh, issue. And then the last issue uh, pertaining to this section of the treaties that Imam al-Muzani mentioned about prayer behind the leaders in jihad and hajj along with them. Imam Muzani said, and jihad and the hajj must be performed along with every leader regardless of whether he is just or oppressive. So regardless of whether the leader is wicked or the leader is uh, just uh, the hajj and jihad fi sabilillah are mashru legislated to be implemented alongside of him or behind him <clears throat> Sheikh Ali Shubul he mentions regarding iqamat al-hajj wal jihad ma'a wali al-amr so this is very important. He mentions regarding uh, establishing the Hajj, the pilgrimage, and jihad <coughs> with the uh, Muslim leader. He said, this is the Mas'ala Thalath. Oh, Mas'ala Athalatha. This is the third issue. He says, the iqamat al-jihad wal hajj khalf kullu imam Birrin wa fajirin ma lam yakun kufrihi kufrin bawahin yunassu al ulama ala hatain sha'iratain al hajj wal jihad or lima yunassu al ulama hada. The Sheikh says establishing jihad and the pilgrimage be behind or alongside of every imam that is 
uh, righteous or whether he is wicked, as long as he does not have disbelief, open disbelief. That's clear, as the Prophet ﷺ said, that you would have from Allah Barhan. That it would be clear that there's it's indisputable uh, disbelief. That no one, there's no debate about it amongst the, the, the ulama and about making tatbiq of that. And the mas'ala of takfir and ma'ayin with that individual. There's no dispute. And so as long as the Imam is not outside the fold of Islam, he's a Muslim, whether he's a wicked Muslim or he's a righteous Muslim, then it is mashru'ah, it is legislated that one makes hajj alongside of him and jihad. This is what you find in the kutub of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah in the issue related to creed and minhaj and methodology, as we said. Uh, and then he said that the scholars, <clears throat> they mention uh, regarding this issue, these two great, uh, these two great aspects of the religion, meaning Hajj and Jihad, <clears throat> these two great sha'ir, these two great uh, signs of the religion, that the religion is being implemented, he said, and he, he put it in question form, why is it that it was related to these two things, Hajj and Jihad. What do they have in common? Why? What's the big deal? Why did the Imams of the Sunnah, why does Imam Muzni, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiyah, why does Imam at tahawi why does Imam uh, Khalal, why does Imam al laqai why does Imam, uh, <coughs> Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, why does Imam uh, Baba Hari and all these Imma of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah, Imam Qayrawani, why, why do they, uh, they, they mention this jihad along uh, every bir wa fajr, you know, uh, every righteous and wicked imam and making hajj alongside of them? Why do they mention that? Why is this a common uh, point in the books of creed and ittaqad? And why, wh what's the significance? He said, لِأَنَّهُمَا ibadatan. he said the reason that these, uh, the Mas'ala of Hajj in Jihad with the Imam is mentioned uh, and, and mentioned in this uh, section of the treaties, it's because that these are two great acts of worship that are collective acts of worship, as we mentioned. And these two acts of worship do not occur or cannot be practiced without the criterion and without being organized and without safety and security and that safety and security and that uh, organization or it being an orderly act of ibadah and being organized does not happen except with an imam uh, an imam uh, one imam and hajj is done once in a, a person's lifetime. So I hope that that's, that's clear. That's very uh, a very uh, strong and beneficial uh, point that the Sheikh is mentioning here, that Hajj and Jihad, they require Imams. And they require, they have criterion, you know, they have shurut, conditions for Jihad, and conditions that are required uh, to make Hajj. And th likewise, they have criterion that must be in place. And also, they require, especially Hajj, requires uh, safety and security to perform. You can't, if there's a war and uh, chaos, you will not be able to perform Hajj. 
and it will not be required for you to perform Hajj uh, if there's, you know, the place, if Mecca or around it is uh, unsafe and dangerous and, ins and unsecure and your life is greatly at stake and at risk by trying to make the pilgrimage, then you won't have the ability. So this security is only maintained by an imam by having an imam of the deen to protect and preserve you and secure your route on the hajj. And these are collective duties that require an imam. So that's a very, very important observation. And we ask Allah, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. And anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.